first of all, thanks for your time. Because I know if, if you're busy, I appreciate you taking time out. No worries. I thought during this downtime, we'd, we'd see some former players about their time at the club and if they've had promotions, yeah. we talk about that. Goal scorers such as yourself. Um, and there'll be a few younger fans that perhaps don't know your journey through the game. Um, yeah. Obviously, I know you started non-league and, and worked your way up. And if we can, I wanted to start in your non-league days because before you started playing for Rushton, um, I gather you were kind of playing at a lower level. So mm-hmm. just talk us through your youth career and how your move to Rushton came about. Yeah, so uh, my youth career has two parts to it. So it started off in, in Canada originally. and. Um, in Canada at the time, there was no real development um, pathways. So, you know, whereas in England and Europe, you've got professional clubs where you can go into, you know, uh, an academy from a young age and work your way up to getting into first team. Um, there wasn't that in, in Canada or North America, really. So, Luckily for me, I had a British passport and I came over to England when I was 12 and came on trial to Gillingham, Ipswich, a few other clubs and got a, a taste of, of what it's like it being in an academy and playing at that level. So that was, that was massive um, at that age. And then when I got to 15, uh, myself and family decided to to move over to England to give me a better opportunity of getting into one of these professional environments because from young I knew this is what I wanted to do and yeah took the leap moved over and as a kid you've got these high expectations and you just think everything's going to work out perfect in the beginning so I knew it was going to be tough but I also thought you know I'm a good enough player about myself and confident so I'm just going to go out there and work as hard as I can. Um, but when I first came over, it was for Jills. Mm, uh, Darren ironic. Hare was the, yeah, Darren Hare was the director at the time. And he um, he said, look, we'll, we'll take you on schoolboy forms. And I signed that for, I think it was a three-month or six-month contract. But the timing was a bit difficult because when I came over in the September, uh, that's pretty much when... And my age group at the time, 15, coming into 16, players are, you know, being told whether they're getting scholarships or not. Yep. So I came into, you know, a team where you've had a few kids that have been coming up through the School of Excellence, uh, been around them for years. And I guess the club kind of knew who, you know, were going to get scholars. But, you know, obviously for me, it was just about getting in the environment and giving it a go. And so I moved over to England in September. By the October, November, I was told I wasn't getting a scholarship, which was the right decision at the time because I was nowhere ready. You know, I'd just come to the country. I was just getting used to everything, playing, life, school and everything. And, um, yeah, that was the first real knockback. And, and that kind of led me into my to uh, uh, the non-league level where I, I signed for Dulwich Hamlet um, on a kind of similar to a YTS a scholarship but you get to train and, and go to a college and in between that I was playing Sunday league and just trying to just find my way in the game in England you know trying to adapt um, so at 16 I luckily had an opportunity to go to Rushton through Jeff Harrop, who was the wide youth director at the time, who had seen me previously a few years back. And uh, I was there playing games and going to train and start to get a feel for the full-time environment. And, uh, yeah, Jeff gave me my first chance at, at uh, professional football by giving me a YTS. So at uh, Rushton at the time, your manager would have been Barry Hunter, Graham Wesley? No. So when I when I signed as a as a First year scholar, uh, the manager was Brian Talbot. Oh, okay, and, of course. Uh, yeah, and Russian were on, you know, on the ascendancy as a club. You know, they'd come off the back of coming into the football league, and you know, they were known as the 
you know, the big spenders at the time mm. and Max Briggs being chairman and pumping money into the club and signing a lot of, you know, good players at that level um, and bringing some, some big names to the club at the time. And it was just amazing. Like, the training ground was brilliant. If, if you ask anyone that, you know, went to the ground or went around, you know, the facilities, it was just, it was just one of a kind uh, um, state of the art at the time. And um, I was just delighted to be in full-time environment of, of being able to train every day and, you know, having the chance to, to live out my dream of being a professional. Having researched your youth career, I, I stumbled across a piece saying you'd had trials with both Manchester clubs. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, so that happened, um, that happened three months into my YTS at Rushton. Right. Uh, I went through a, a great run of form, you know, trying to win my contract and win my scholarship. And uh, there was a lot of clubs that were watching at the time. And, you know, I, I didn't know anything about it. I was just head down trying to get a YTS. And uh, I think I signed for Rushton in October. This was, what, 2003 maybe? Yeah, because I moved to 2000. To, and um, two months in, Man United knock on the door and say, uh, yeah, you know, we, we want to have a look at him. And I was just blown away because mm. it was, I've only been in the country a year and I've just been working hard, just trying to get into a full-time. And as soon as I get in a full-time environment, you know, the big duck come in. Yeah, so, um, so that came up and I went up there for two weeks and it was an amazing experience. And I got another taste of, what it takes to be at that level as a young player and um quite rightly so I, I didn't feel you know i wasn't ready at the time um so you know they said you know thanks for coming but uh you know i wish you all the best and then a week later literally man city came in and said all right you know they didn't take it but we'll have a look um and this was a second bite at the church for me and i thought yeah this is this sounds like the one i'll go up there and Went up there for another two weeks and uh, just didn't quite make the grade again. And it was a, a rocky roller coaster because, on one hand, I was excited about starting at Rushton, um, uh, you know, as a first year scholar. And then, you know, getting a taste of that kind of top level in, in the youth, youth team level and, you know, getting told no. So then, you know, it was a, a massive come down because. You know, obviously, you'd love to play for Man United or Man City at the time. Um, but quickly, you know, with you know people that around me and, and Jeff, the white youth director, he said, look, it was a great experience. You've seen what you need to see. Just get your head down now and, and try and make um, make a career for yourself here and, and get the first team. And that's what I did. Throughout this whole process of your youth career, it was a, 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 quite a big sacrifice for your family to move from where you were to, to, to England. I mean... I don't suppose you felt pressure at, at that age, but obviously your parents, it was a big sacrifice for them. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was huge, man. Um, you know, when I look back on it, I'm so grateful that I was privileged enough to be in the position for them to, you know, fork out the money to spend to get me over here. And I was just so lucky as well to have family that was based over here initially, um, you know, extended family that move in with and, you know, have, have somewhere to stay and look after me um and then you know yeah my, my mom moved over but yeah it was it was a massive uh massive collective project you know the whole me moving over here and you know who was going to take me to training and who was going to you know look after me in school and stuff and it was a big big project and everyone chipped in and, and played a massive part you know and i'm so grateful so having gone through those trials back to rushton you work your way to the first team and you build up the momentum of scoring tons and tons of goals. I mean, mm. for some strikers at some clubs, things just click. And I think once you'd scored your first goal, you couldn't stop scoring. Yeah. So once again, um, just timing, you know, speak about timing in football. And for me, it's no different. Um, when I came to Rushton, we were, in the championship, it was nationwide division one, if you can remember. Yeah. <laughs> Some kids don't even know that. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we, we went through a stage then where we had back to back relegations. And 
luckily enough for me, even though it was sad to Dean, you didn't want the club to get relegated, it was giving me an opportunity to get the first team. So in my second year, we were in uh, Division Two, and started to be around the first team a lot more, and um, and then came towards the end of the season, made my debut, um, and and came off the bench a few times and grabbed a couple of goals in League Two, which was you know great, great for my confidence, great for my development. Um, but we got relegated that season, so yes. next year we were in the conference. And lucky for me, I'm coming through as a third year scholar, doing well, and uh, got my chance to to play in the first team that season, and uh, and didn't look back really. Just took my chance because I knew this was my chance. Um, and thinking, okay, I've had a taste of the league. I know what that's like. You know, the conference is more different, um, and it's more you know physically demanding and challenging. But uh, yeah, found my way, you know, landed on my feet in the conference and, and had a really good season, which led to uh, to my move. Yeah, I remember at the time your name was being touted around various different clubs up and down the country, and then mm. him coming for you. When was the mm. first time you were aware of that move? Did you know much? Obviously, you knew something about the club because you were there on trial. Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've always had a, a love for the club because. You know, it was, it was one of the first clubs I saw when I came to England. You know, I remember going to Priestfield. I watched, I think the first Jill's game I watched was um, Jill and him against uh, Wolverhampton right. at home. And um, I sat, um, what's the stand across? Come through the tunnel, stand to the right. To the right of Gordon Road. Right. So I sat in the Gordon Road stand and there was a massive pillar in the way. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, right, first game, can't see anything, but I was just so buzzing. Um, and uh, and yeah, it was, yeah, as I said, I just had a, an understanding of the club because I came one of my first trips to England with a team from Canada. We went and we watched the first team train and went to the stadium for the stadium tour and I bought a Gillingham tie and I just had this thing, um, you know, for the Jills and then. Yeah, when, when I heard that they were interested, it was kind of in the back of your mind because, you know, you're getting on your professional career and you just focus on doing well. Um, and then, yeah, to know that they were the ones that, that put the money up for me to, to get me out of the conference and bring me into League One uh, was just funny because I remember sitting down with, with the chairman and uh, I said, this, this is crazy. You could have had me for free. You had to pay money for me. And uh, that, that didn't go down quite well. He laughed, <laughs> but... I don't even have me for free that to spend money. But um yeah, it was uh it was a great time and um yeah, I was very excited because it was kinda of like a coming back to, you know, where I thought I was gonna start off and you know was able to now I'm in the first team and I can, you know, make something happen, which was good. When a club does pay money for a player, as the Jills did with you, do you feel added pressure or is that just in inevitability of football if a club wants to you to play for them they're going to have to pay some money well yeah it's there's pressure with it because you know and in, in, in the game and football you know whatever league it is you know from from league two league one up if the club's spending money that there's an expectation there um so straight away you come into that but you know the manager at the time uh mark simpson was just great with me man he he brought me in. There was a few other boys that came in from, from non-league as well. And he was just, look, just go out there, do your thing. Don't think about anything. Don't worry about the pressure or anything. Just go out and score your goals. And and I was I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, and, and it, you know, it made me feel welcome. And, you know, the fans straight away, you know, um, took a liking to me as well. And, and it, it was just a great, great timing. And, you know, for where I was in my career and, and the hunger, um, which were wanting to do well for the club um, was just a great harmony. I think your first goal for us, I might be wrong, I've not written it down, I think it was Bournemouth at home. And, uh, it was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think you then went to score twice against Luton in a game where it seemed, it seemed destined you wouldn't score because the keeper made so many saves and they were putting bodies on the line. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, we go into the last game at Leeds with our destiny pretty much already sorted. However, we had a slim chance. Yeah. 
I was there on the day and of course you scored. Um, yeah. But realistically, did the squad really believe that we could stay up? Mm, it was a tricky day. Was a challenging time. Yeah, it was, it was, I remember it, you know, really, really well. It was my first taste of, at Russian, I had a little taste of what it was like to be relegated at a club and just the sadness of it. Mm. And I was like, wow, like you just feel this heavy, heavy drop. Um, and I came in January. Yeah. We're in League One, kind of okay, but then, you know, we struggle with form and then comes down towards the end of the season and we're like, right, I don't, I'm not letting this happen. That's, that was the mindset in my head. Um, you know, as long as I'm playing, I'm not letting this happen. And, you know, you go out there and you're giving it everything, but then, you know, you just kind of run out of time and points. And um, that Leeds game, um, I remember the build-up to that, and, you know, really excited. For me, I was excited because I was right right Island Road. We know what we need to do. It's a great you know, venue to play. play well. Yeah. Um, but it was just, you know, it, it didn't work out. And, yeah, they were obviously <laughs> – they're in playoffs, so they were – you know, looking to get promoted as well. So it was, you know, jam-packed, uh, Mellon Road. And they were a great team. You know, they had an amazing season. So it was it was always going to be a challenge. Um, but we, we, we were confident. We were confident because, you know, a lot of the boys, as I said, came from non-league and, you know, knew what it meant to play in the league and just wanted to make sure that we stayed on that level. Um, but unfortunately, it, it didn't work out. And I just remember that feeling afterwards. Um, you know, the final whistle and realizing what our fate was, and yeah, that heavy drop feeling again, and that sadness. And um, I actually spoke about this the other day when I, I, I remember falling to the floor and thinking, Oh, um, you know, and the emotions start to come in. And uh, Bradley Johnson, who uh, played against at youth level at Northampton, and we got our, our moves around similar times into the league, and um. He picked me up straight away off the ground. And I just remember thinking, he was like, just get your head up, you know, get your head up, you know, don't, don't let your head drop. And that was a big moment for me because I thought, yeah, I'm sad because I've been relegated and, you know, what that means for the club. But, you know, I'm going to be here for the next few years. So, mm. you know, maybe I can do something about it and, and try and get it right. And I remember going back on the coach and having this mixed feeling of, what do we need to do next? You know, how do I, or how do we get to that stage where, you know, we're, we're fighting for a promotion and, um, you know, getting promoted and, and feeding off that energy that Leeds have. And I, I try to focus on that on sort of relegation. And then towards the end of the season, when I had my meeting with the manager, he just mentioned, he said, look, you know, obviously for you, you come from non-league. This is still a plus. League two is obviously a great, uh, great league to play in and a great platform to show. So, you know, next season, get your head down and work hard. I think... Mark Stimson said at the time that he was in the middle of a rebuilding process. He was trying to assemble his own squad. So yeah. in the back of your mind, did you think, well, we've got a good enough squad to come straight back, straight back up. It was just, as you say, we ran out of games. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was, it was a transition because, you know, you just, for me personally, I just had gotten used to league one football and what that was like. And, and um, now, okay. League two's coming in. You know, we were trying to build. Um, Gaffer staying, which is great. You know, the core groups still there, great. So, um, yeah, we knew what we had to do from day one. And um, that was the intention. You know, we knew we were, we were going to push for promotion, and that was that was the goal. And we just worked towards that every day and worked hard and, you know, had a, had a good team that had had a taste of, you know, the bitterness of being relegated and obviously wanted to, to correct that. So during the off-season, Mark Stimson signs some new players, gets a really settled 11 yourself. Dennis Olley, Josh Wright, Simon King, Gary Richards, Barry Fuller. Um, and we had a really good season, of course. I think you scored 21 goals and we had a good cup run. Aston Villa at home, you scored. Just talk us through um, that game. Yeah, it's just as you say. Yeah, we had we had some some new signs that came in, and I think just as a structure, we knew how 
play and be in the right position. And for me, it was, you know, playing off a target man, uh, Gary Mulligan, uh, also I played up front there. Um, when McCammon came in. Um, so, yeah, I could just focus on, you know, my strengths, which is, you know, playing on the shoulder, my movement. And then, you know, we were so reliant on, on Andy Barch, Barcham and, 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 and Diesel um, on the wings because they, you know, they were the bread and butter. Um, you know, 1v1s, getting crosses in, beating players and scoring goals as well. So, yeah, everything just clicked. And then, you know, Up Jerk came in, Chris Weston came in, and, yeah, we just, we just had a, a really good team. Um, and uh, it, was, it was delightful to, to play in. And obviously, yeah, you know, scoring, scoring 20 goals is, is as ideal as a strategy of what you want, and you need a good team to be able to do that. That Aston Villa game, I always thought we were harshly done by and perhaps deserved uh, at least a replay. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that that game was, was was great, man. It was my first real big FA Cup tie. Um, you know, live on TV and Priestfield was rocking, and it was just really. Uh, really good day uh, as you say we did kind of get robbed at the end you know with, with the pen that was given but um, yeah they were, they were you know they had good players yeah. we didn't really we were confident going into it and we knew we had you know we were at home we just said right just go for it but uh, I think you know obviously that bit more experience and cleverness kind of played out on the day from them but yeah we, we made a good account of ourselves and, and obviously getting a goal as well which was great we finished the season well. We didn't quite creep into the automatic, so we had to settle for playoffs. And yep. we had Rochdale. Mm-hmm. Always a tough cookie, Rochdale, especially at, at Scotland. But having drawn nil-nil at their place, it kind of mm-hmm. put us in pole position to, to get through. What was the mood mm-hmm. in the camp like before that second leg at Priestfield? Yeah, for me, it was weird because I was really disappointed after the first game because. Mm-hmm. We didn't play particularly well. I didn't play particularly well. And we kind of thought, yeah, we should, we should be up here, you know. Um, but then you are put yourself in a really good position because, oh, no. You there? Yeah, I can still hear you. Don't worry. I just can't Yeah, start. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I like your logo, though. Sorry, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. Cheers, man. Cheers. <laughs> um, yeah, it's – yeah, so – we we felt we should have done well, and we knew okay, they didn't they didn't really threaten us or hurt us in any way. They're at home, you know. The atmosphere wasn't great, so we know coming back home, you know, we're in we're in the ascendancy, so we fancy ourselves. Um, but I was kind of on this disappointment feel because it's playoffs and you want to do well, and I think that young naive, you know, wanting to go out there full of beans in the first game. And I remember speaking to my agent at the time, and he was, he was like, look, it's a two-legged fixture. You know, just go out there and do your thing in the second leg. And gave me some confidence. And um, the boys were just really supportive. I think they could kind of feel that. I was a bit disappointed from the first leg. And uh, we were on, we stayed, we stayed in a hotel uh, the night before that game. And I remember coming, uh, we're on the coach coming to the game, and all the boys were like, it's your day today. And I thought, decent boys are giving me some, you know, giving me some backing. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, yeah, it is my day today. And, um, yeah, I just went out there and and we did really well. And, you know, lucky enough to to get two goals and, you know, get us us to to Wembley, which was just an amazing, amazing achievement. In that second leg, I think Chris Dagnall had made the score one all, if I remember correctly. And then you stepped up to take the penalty. Mm-hmm. Were you the designated taker, or did you say I'm having this one? Yeah, no, I was, I was, and you know, as I, as, as I say again, it was just you know confidence from the boys and the, the manager because I'd, I'd had a few penalties that season. Uh, I remember early on I missed one, um, and there was kind of this thing of well, you know, it's going to be on them or someone else going to take them, and I remember going to the gaff and saying, "Gaff, I'm still on them," you know. Right. Um, he said, okay. And yeah, so since then, I was 
I was designated uh, pen taker. There was, I think we had, uh, we had a game against Grimsby kind of leading up towards the end. And it was kind of a pressure penalty and I just remember taking confidence from that one. So yeah, there was no doubt that and, um, I was going to take it. But as you know, coming into the playoff, you know, it's it's a bit more nerves and a bit more pressure on the line. But um, no, it was, I was I was confident. I was lucky it went in, and yeah, it was just just amazing scenes, and you know, just just a a really really good time with the club, and you know, knowing that you know you played a part in that, and obviously getting to Wembley and, and going up as we did. Let's talk about Wembley then, because. Um... Not very often a player gets the opportunity to play at Wembley. You guys did. Yeah. And it was really yeah. down in the final. And of course, we'd had that pretty horrible result at their place getting beat 7 0. Yeah. As a collective, did you feel we owe them one? We, we, we've, we, we've got to do the job. Or is it very much this is just a new fixture? Doesn't matter what's happened before. Apply yourself. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> From day one, as soon as we knew it was Shrewsbury, we thought, perfect. Um, <laughs> so you were, you were up for it? To, yeah, boys, we, no one had to say anything. Obviously, it's playoff final Wembley, but to put them in the picture, we were like, yeah, because when you get beat 6-0, it's, it's just the embarrassment of it. And even though it was earlier on in the season, it's still, you know, I, I still have... Video. I still have memories of having the the meet the meeting on the Monday and going through all the goals again and seeing you know what happened and you know who was at fault and where we went wrong and stuff and it just stuck out. So you know to to get them back at for our final was was really good and we knew what we wanted to do for for more than one reason. How did Mark Stimson deal with everything? Because he was a, a young manager at the time, youngish. I know he had a game at Wembley before. I think it was the FA Trophy. But yeah. how important was he in lead up to the game and just trying to keep you grounded and just trying to keep you calm? He was, he was perfect, to be honest. I think how he handled the transition, looking back on it, you know how he, you know, built his team and you know his his way of how he wanted to play and you know being a Jill's manager comes with pressure, man. You know. It's, mm-hmm. So it's the only team in Kent, and there's you know a lot of uh, demand from the fans and the club to, you know, to do well. And you know, I thought he handled it very well. And you know, he he had worked with a lot of the players previously and knew what they could give, and you know, kicked us out the backside when we needed to. Um, and, you know, praised us when we needed that as well. So I, I thought he was brilliant. And with me personally, you know, he was he was great. You know, I learned so much from him and. You know, gave me a lot of confidence to go out and, and score goals, and you know I haven't scored twenty goals in a season since him. So if, I'd love for him to be another manager again in the league, <laughs> be a manager in the league again. Um, but yeah, it was, um, you know, it was, a, it was a great time. I think he did an amazing job. The Wembley itself, I mean, it's obviously iconic. You know, obviously even with the new stadium, it's an iconic place to play. But as you yeah. leave the dressing room and you line up in the tunnel, the doors are closed. You can feel the atmosphere building. Um, what was going through your head in the last seconds leading up to kickoff? Well, uh, one of the best things that could have happened to us was the chairman uh, got us to go to Wembley. I think it might have been a few days before. So he got us to go, and the cameras were there and all that. and to walk around the stadium and all that. And he was saying to us how important it is to kind of get the feel of it initially. Um, because, yeah, Wembley can obviously be a daunting place, you know, mm-hmm. massive. Or is it 60 plus, 70,000, 60,000 fans there? Um, and for players that, you know, haven't played in that sort of environment before, it could be, it's a massive thing. So you got us to, to have a, you know, walk around and, get a feel for the ground. So we took out that initial fear factor, so to speak. Um, so when we, you know, on that day, you still have your nerves and, you know, it's, it's an amazing occasion. Um, and in my mind, I was always told, you know, 
play the game, not the occasion. And this was my first real big occasion, really. Mm. Um, but I felt confident, a little bit of nerves. Uh, and I just remember coming out the tunnel and um, <laughs> not got an expectation, but, you, you know, you're anticipating what's about to happen. And then this fire just blew up beside us as we're walking out. Yeah, either side of the tank. Uh, and I nearly wet myself because I was like, what the fuck? What the hell was that? Like, where did that come from? So it kind of like shocked me. And um, it was actually really powerful, actually, because it kind of just brought me back present instead of thinking. Mm. And uh, yeah, and then you walk out and you do all the formalities and stuff. And, you know, you just, you just want to get the game underway um, because, you know, once the game's underway, you just zone in and do what you need to do. From memory, having been there on the day, it was a very, very tight game with very few chances. And then, mm -hmm. of course, we win a corner in the last minute. And um, we won't talk about whether it was or wasn't a corner, but it got given. Um, yeah. Uh, the cross comes in, I think it was Josh Wright. And mm -hmm. from where on the TV camera, you looked completely unmarked. But I, I assume someone yeah. was marking you and then just wandered off. Yeah. So. Yeah, as you say, it was a it was a nothing game really. I think you know they didn't really hurt us. We we dominated possession. We we had most of the game, and I think we probably had most of the. Uh, we didn't really have that many chances, but we were on top for most of the mm. game. But it was yeah, it was, that one was really kind of like a typical Wembley game, you know. You, every team's just trying to fight with the but we did have a little bit of a an edge over them. Or maybe, you know, we, we were better on the ball. They weren't really a footballing side anyway, really. Um, you know, they had Holti up front and they had one or two decent wingers. But that was it. So, yeah, it was, as we say, going into injury time now. And yeah, I was, I was marked. I was on the goalkeeper. Um, and I just remember saying to myself before the corner came, I said, wherever the ball goes, just go. Just go and head it. Wherever this goes, go and head it. Attacking the end where the supporters are housed. A corner for Gilligan, the header and in! Across the line! Simeon Jackson's header sends Gilligan back to League One. There's no way back here for Shrewsbury. Right on the stroke of the 90, would you believe it? Unbelievable, isn't it? You're looking for Hero and you're not surprised. It's that man in your picture. I said it's got to be quality. It was quality. Nobody picks him up. There, clearly in the roof of the net. But once they didn't defend it, but this is pure quality. Concentrated, get it in the area. Nobody picks him up. And that's a terrific header. And to generate his power, just goes over holes. Hits the target, bounces off the shoulder and into the roof of the net. And he knows he could have taken his team. Two um, and yeah, usually I'm, I'm meant to be sniffing on the goalkeeper and just waiting for things to drop and see what happens, but I just went for it. I just, yeah, made my mind up before the cross even came in. And uh, it just into that position and it looked like I was free. Um, and I just closed my eyes and headed it. <laughs> I, I was actually on the back row. <laughs> I was to sad. see that it went in. Well, on the very back row and I didn't think it had gone in so I didn't celebrate and you kind of stopped and looked yes so did you yeah. certain either yeah I wasn't I wasn't sure because after I'd opened my eyes from closing them um, <laughs> I saw the ball kind of came out um, so I wasn't sure so my initial instinct was to, to look to the lino but then as I was looking to the lino I was like no wait that hit the net so that um, yeah, I, I just it clicked and then I just, yeah, I just seen his man just running off. And I remember, uh, I used to room with Dennis Dolly, we used to room, uh, during that season and we made up a celebration before what we were going to do. <laughs> so as we were running, I, I actually have a picture of, of myself running through the corner flag and it looks like I'm kind of like, I'm in midair and I'm just so happy. Um. And then as we get to the corner, it's clicked, and I was like, oh, celebration, celebration. And then, yeah, did the dance, and it was just, yeah, it's an amazing scene. Well, when I put this up, I'll put the dance over the top, so fans can uh, <laughs> yeah. be talking about. Yeah. Um, 
And then, of course, pre- we're pretty much there. We only had a couple of minutes to play. I know, I think Grant Holt had the chance right at the death, which he put wide. But yeah. the final whistle went, having gone through what you had done the previous season at Leeds, mm. was, was, was relief the right word? Pride? Yeah, not just satisfaction. Yeah, you know, relief, satisfaction, pride, just knowing that, you know, we set this target and, you know, we worked towards it and we did it through the playoffs, which is always, you know, I think the most the toughest way to do it, but the most, you know, rewarding way to do it. Um, you know, and, and the risk that comes with that, you don't know, you know, if the team, you know, has, has a better day than you on that day, you know, things could have worked out differently. But um, yeah, it was just really, really proud. Of course, you, you stay for the next season. We're back in, in, in mm-hmm. League One and we, we started really well. I think it was the, the 5 0 over Swindon. Um, yeah. Let's actually let's talk about that game because um, you scored a hat trick. And yeah. as opening days go, it was incredibly uplifting for everyone at the club. And for any longlooker, you would have thought we were on nine for a really good season. Yeah, it was, um, I think, just that momentum, you know, when you do get promoted and you know, you have that momentum, the club's buzzing, the players are buzzing. Um, I was over the moon. I had just come back from making my debut for the national team. So mm. I was buzzing. Um, and I remember going into that game thinking, right, you need to kick on now. You know, it's, you can't rest on that. And it's a new season, you know, new target. So, you know, go out there and do the piss. And, yeah, the boys played really well. And I think maybe that was... Ideally, you want to start every season well. Um, I think maybe for us, we, we started, that was a great way to start the season. We wouldn't change that. But yeah, we, we found it really tough, um, you know, towards the second half. And, and yeah, ended up, you know, leading to us getting relegated again, which is, <sighs> if you talk about roller coasters of football, that's... that's yeah, you all saw Jules did that, didn't it? It was very much an yeah. up and down career. I mean... We had so many good games, Southampton and, and Leeds and Norwich, ironically, who you, you signed for. And we were so yeah. at home, we just couldn't win away. And I guess that yeah. ultimately was was our downfall. Yeah, as well to me. Um, you know, at Priestfield, I think not many teams, you know, um, dominated us at home. Um, you know, and we were so confident playing at home. But uh, yeah, for some reason that that, uh, that hunch on our back on on the road wasn't, you know, we couldn't we couldn't correct it. And um, yeah, if, if you want to stay in any league, you know, you have to pick up points away from home. And yeah, we didn't do that. So sadly, we we were relegated at, at Wickham, one of those <laughs> horrible days, which I've I brought up, which you probably don't want me to, but again, nope. those. <laughs> Regrettable days, much much like Leeds. We won't touch on it too much, but I'm, I'm sure no. um, at the full time whistle, you 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 hit the ground and think, oh no. Yeah, it was. I think that one was different because I felt I had a bigger hand to play in it because you know the first one was like, okay, you came in January and you know transition, etc. But this one was, you know, you had the whole season and. Um, you know, going into that game, there was it was in our hands, um, and uh, yeah, I, I missed a penalty as well. And from the pressure of that one, it was just 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 had so much time to think about it. And it was against you know Jamie Young, who was a senior, an older pro with me at Rushton, and you know knew a lot about me and we knew each other and I think the psychology came into play and just overthought it and um, ended up skying it over the bar and just to know that you know, the game could have changed you know from you know scoring that pen and that leading to, to relegation which was a heavy heavy feel and it took me a while to to get over that so of course for the the, the following season um past is new <laughs> and off to to know it um, did you know, I'm not suggesting you did know, but maybe in the, the latter half of the previous season, was it in the back of your mind that perhaps a, a new challenge might be needed? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, as as a striker, when you're scoring, you, and you just come off the back of a promotion and 
coming to the league and you do them while you're scoring goals and you know this just talk about you know teams interested in you and stuff it does it does affect you and it does come in the back of your mind but you just try and focus and keep your head down and keep doing what you're doing um but yeah i i knew there was a few clubs that were looking at me and i just i didn't want it to affect what i was doing um and just just tried to focus on that towards the back end of the season and then you know when you do get relegated you're like it's that heavy feel again and you know that, that disappointment that comes in um but then you realize that you're also in a business which mm-hmm. that was the first time i actually had that experience where it was like you know you've been relegated but you know you're one of the assets and you know you might you might get sold um so it's just a mixed mixed feeling um because you know on one hand you're like okay you want to kick on in your career and develop and on the other hand you're like nah, hang on a minute like the relegated here like you want to go and and correct it again um you know and it, it was i remember coming into pre-season there's a lot more talk about it and i think um yeah, Norwich had put a bid in and, you know, there's back and forth between three clubs and it was like, well, what's happening? Um, so that was that was an awkward period. But, you know, when it did go over the line, um, just had to refocus and, you know, concentrate on, on the new journey ahead. And of course, 12 months later, you were playing in the Premier League. I mean, for someone who had, had, had started in, in non-league, to sign that, contract first of all with Norwich and then to get into the Premier League must have been a very proud moment because you, you, you'd done it the hard way really yeah yeah it was um, just can't even explain it really when, when you think about it and, when you say roller coaster um, it's it really was <laughs> when you say roller coaster dude that's yeah that's exactly what this is um, yeah it, it was I, I remember watching the um, the promotion game for Norwich it was on uh, I was on Sky the other day and it was the first time I've watched the full game over and at the end I think one of the commentators said that you know talk to that I was I was in uh, I was in League Two. And um, yeah, you know, I was like, Oh yeah, that, that actually did happen. But <laughs> you're so engrossed in you know, you're so engrossed in every step that you, you don't even think about any of that. You know, you're just so focused. You know, looking for the next one, the next one, the next game, the next goal. Um so yeah, you don't even you don't even realize, and um, yeah, you just you just feel immensely proud, and yeah, that kind of relief of you know achieving a dream that, that you set out to in the beginning when you're a kid. As a play in the Premier League, must have been an absolute pleasure for you. But going to your international uh, background, uh, you won the Canadian Player of the Year in 2009. You represented them in in um, it's the Gold Cup, isn't it? Um, mm-hmm. every player wants to play for their country but to be named your country's player of the year that's quite special isn't it yeah it was amazing it was a um, off the back of it was a promotion season so you know it was <laughs> it was just epic for me um, you know having that season scoring the goals getting promoted and then going away with the national team making your debut going into the World Cup even getting player of the year it was like Wow, um, and then yeah, just just left you hungry, kind of wanting more and wanting to do well on on, on that level. And yeah, it's, it's just constant steps, you know, looking at the next thing, and next thing, and next thing, and, and trying to you know, keep achieving more. Of course, after Norwich, you went to play abroad very, uh, briefly in Germany for uh, yeah, bike, I think it was, and yeah. came back to England, played for a few clubs, you know, at Stevenage. Um, but re- reflecting on your time with the Jills, um, what are your standout memories? And when, when you do eventually retire, h- how will you regard your time at Priestfield? Um, just just really grateful. Um, just at the fact that, you know, being able to, to get to know a club from when you're young and then go away develop as a player, come back. The club has to buy you back. You kind of have a bit of like, you know, I wanted to prove 
be wrong in the beginning. There you go. Um, and then being able to go in and, and do something really successful uh, with the club. Um, it's just an amazing field, man. And, you know, it, it always leaves a, a special place, you know, in your heart and your memory. Um, I think for me, that that's just what it is. And who knows, you know, I'm, I'm still playing, you know, you don't know where football takes you. Um, I've still got a lot left in me. So, um, yeah, you just... You just appreciate it for for what it is, and you always have that respect for the club and, and the fans. And um, I remember going back um, when I was at Coventry um, and playing at Priestfield. That was the first time in, in such a long while. And yeah, it just brought back you know amazing memories, and you know seeing the staff and everyone, and it, it's just great, man. So um, yeah, I'm lucky to to have those those memories and that experience with the club. And, you know, you always want clubs to do really well, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I could have played a part of the club's history. 42 goals and 115 appearances. So that's a pretty good return, isn't it? I could have got more, man. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's great to have. Um, but, you know, if you don't get, if you don't win anything, you know, off the back of those goals, it kind of goes in vain sometimes. But um, yeah, so to, to have that and play it in a team that, you know, was able to achieve that. It's just, it's just tough to Superb. Jacko, if you're ever back at Priestfield or um, considering coming to watch a game, let us know. We'd love to get you on the pitch to uh, to wave to the fans. But Yeah, man, that'd be, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, uh, stay in touch. We'll try and make something happen. But for now, we'll stay safe and thanks for your time. Yes. And uh, well. hopefully, touch wood, we'll, um, we'll see you soon. Yeah. Nice one, man. Appreciate it. Cheers, Jacko. Thanks very much. Right. You take Nice one, bro. Have a good one. Take Cheers, care, mate. Bro. Cheers. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.